Howdy, it's Kyle talking about some of the best natural formations in North America. I'll be examining the biggest, tallest, widest, deepest, highest, and longest of many different types of formations on the continent, including lakes, rivers, swamps, mountains, caves, waterfalls, and more. So keep watching if you want to learn about the ests of natural formations in North America. I'm going to start off by talking about rivers. The longest river system in North America is the Mississippi-Missouri system at almost 4,000 miles. However, when talking just single longest river, the Missouri River is longer than the Mississippi at over 2,300 miles. But for water volume and discharge, the Mississippi is the largest in North America. The longest river system in North America that does not have a dam is the Mackenzie Slave Peace River system of Northwest Territories and Alberta, Canada. This river flows freely for over 2,000 miles in some of the most remote wilderness in the world. Now talking about lakes, the largest one in area in North America as well as the largest freshwater lake on Earth is Lake Superior at over 31,000 square miles. However, if we're being technical, there are only four great lakes as Lake Michigan and Lake Huron are the same lake. If you've ever driven between the two peninsulas in Michigan, you know you're going over just lake there and not river. So Huron and Michigan is one lake in terms of geology. And those two lakes combined or that one lake is larger than Superior at over 45,000 square miles. But either way, the Great Lakes are all pretty big. The deepest lake in North America is Great Slave Lake in Northwest Territories of Canada. It has a depth of over 2,000 feet and is the 10th largest lake in the world in terms of area. The deepest lake in the U.S., just under 2,000 feet, is Crater Lake in Oregon. And why that is so fascinating is because Crater Lake is not even one of the 100 largest lakes in the U.S. in terms of area. So it has the highest depth to area ratio of any lake on Earth. Not quite a lake, but the same general category. The largest swamp in North America is Big Cypress Swamp in Florida. This is just north of the Everglades, which is a larger area, but the Everglades are not a swamp. It's classified as a wetland prairie and is characterized by having a large amount of grasses. A swamp is a more forested or wooded area partially submerged in water, and the largest such area in North America is Big Cypress Swamp. Okay, so now let's talk about waterfalls. The tallest single waterfall in the U.S. is Olaupina Falls on Molokai in Hawaii. It's a free fall of almost 3,000 feet, and each of the top three largest waterfalls in the U.S. or Canada are all in Hawaii. For continental waterfalls, the single tallest one is Ribbon Falls, part of the Yosemite Falls series in California at over 1,600 feet. And with the Sierra Nevada receiving so much rain this winter, I'm sure the falls right now are spectacular. The widest waterfall on the continent is Vermilion Falls in Alberta, Canada. Now this series of falls just barely classifies as being a waterfall. It's almost like a really long series of rapids, but at its widest spot, it's over 6,000 feet. But even though it isn't that steep, over a mile wide of rapids is still very impressive. But then there's volume. In terms of height, there are many other waterfalls taller than Niagara, but there's more water volume going over Niagara Falls than any other on the continent. It's actually a series of three different falls, two on the American side, one on the Canadian side, but in terms of the largest waterfall with water volume, Niagara is the king of the continent. So when people talk about the biggest waterfall in North America, it's usually going to be Niagara, but there are many others that are taller. All right, so now for a few oceanic biggests. The deepest offshore canyon is Monterey Canyon off the central coast of California. It's over a mile deep and plays an important role in why there's so much biodiversity in the sea right there. For the east coast of the continent, the deepest canyon is Hudson Canyon at almost 4,000 feet. And this is the largest of a long series of offshore canyons going down to North Carolina. The largest whirlpool is the Old Sow or Old So Whirlpool in the Bay of Fundy off of New Brunswick, Canada. It's also just offshore of Eastport, Maine, the easternmost point of the U.S. You may have heard of the Bay of Fundy having the highest tidal range of anywhere on Earth, and the combination of that and the undersea topography or the bathymetry is why you get this large whirlpool. And in terms of size, it's about a 250-foot diameter in which you get pull from this whirlpool. The largest waves that can be found near the continent are off Cortez Bank offshore of San Diego, California. And why you have such huge waves here is because just beneath this is what would be one of the Channel Islands, but it's completely submerged. 
and that just affects the ocean turbulence and makes for these giant waves. The largest ones have been known to reach 80 feet. The largest near shore waves, one you can see by standing on the coast, is near Piahi, or sometimes called Jaws, in Hawaii. Waves here are known to hit 70 feet or so, and this is one of the top spots in the world for the world's best surfers. Alright, so now let's talk about islands. The largest North American island is Greenland. It's over 800,000 square miles and is more than three times the size of Texas. Between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, the largest island is Baffin Island, which is the fifth largest in the world. It's almost 200,000 square miles. It's larger than California. The largest U.S. island is the Big Island of Hawaii. It's over 4,000 square miles. It's larger than Delaware, but smaller than Connecticut. For the contiguous U.S., the largest island is Long Island, New York. And the physical feature Long Island includes Brooklyn and Queens, as well as Nassau and Suffolk counties. The largest island in a lake is Manitoulin Island in Ontario, Canada. It's located within Lake Huron. It's not as big as Long Island, but it's got to be pretty cool to be on this big island and be surrounded by nothing but lake. Alright, now moving into the earth. Let's take a look at some caves. The longest cave in North America and the longest in the world is Mammoth Cave at over 420 miles of known length. And this is the combined total of an interconnected web of paths, so it isn't just one long 420 mile stretch, it's a bunch of spider web type paths that adds up to 420 miles. Now imagine being blindfolded and dropped off in the middle of it and you have to find your way out. The longest underwater cave is Sac Octoon in Mexico at 235 miles. And southern Mexico, especially the Yucatan Peninsula, is known for having many large underwater caves, including many of those pits that are submerged in water called cenotes. Parts of Sacactoon are dry above the water table, but 235 miles of the cave are underwater, which makes it the longest underwater cave on the continent. The deepest single drop in a cave is Fantastic Pit in Ellison's Cave in northwestern Georgia. It's a single rappel and climb out of 586 feet, which is about the same height as the Seattle Space Needle and over two times the height of the Statue of Liberty. This cave is located about 15 minutes south of where I live, and I know a lot of people that have done this pit. And if you want to do the biggest drop, you got to come to Fantastic Pit in Georgia. All right, now moving over to mountains. The tallest mountain on the continent is Denali in Alaska at over 20,000 feet. And it's interesting to note that for the three tallest mountains on the continent, one is in the U.S., one is in Canada, and one is in Mexico. The second tallest mountain on the continent is Mount Logan in Yukon, Canada at over 19,000 feet. The tallest volcano, as well as being the third highest total peak on the continent, is Pico de Orizaba in Mexico. This sits right along the border of the states of Veracruz and Puebla and stands at over 18,000 feet. However, the largest mountain in the U.S., as well as being the largest mountain on Earth, is Mauna Kea on the Big Island in Hawaii. The peak is only 13,800 feet, but the mountain is over 30,000 feet tall when you count the parts that are underwater. And that's in contrast to Mount Everest, the tallest mountain on Earth, being at just over 29,000 feet. And kind of like how there are only really four great lakes, you can be a hipster geographer and talk about Mauna Kea being the biggest mountain on Earth. The largest glacier in North America is the Bering Glacier in Wrangell St. Elias National Park in Alaska. It's about 1,900 square miles right now, so it'll be interesting to see where it is in 10 or 15 years. And I'm going to talk about canyons last. I do have a video just on canyons talking about some of the biggest and most beautiful ones in North America, so I'll leave a link to that one in the description. The longest single canyon in North America is the Grand Canyon in Arizona at 277 miles. And kind of like Niagara Falls, it's the most famous one for being the biggest, but depending on how you define biggest, it might not be. The longest canyon system in North America is the Copper Canyon system in the state of Chihuahua in Mexico. It's a total of six canyons. No single one is as big as the Grand Canyon, but the six of them combined are over 1,000 miles long. And this is one of the top natural spots in North America I want to visit. The deepest canyon in North America is Kings Canyon in California. It's nowhere near as wide as the Grand Canyon, but it's 8,200 feet deep. You can't really get good grand viewpoints of this either throughout most of it, but it is a vast wilderness. The deepest fluvial canyon, one that is carved out by a river, is Hell's Canyon on the Idaho-Oregon border. This one isn't quite as deep as King's Canyon, but is almost 8,000 feet. 
And even though this is a national recreation area and you'll see a lot of power boats on the river, once you get away from the river, this is one of the deepest wilderness areas in the U.S. And the last thing I wanted to mention is the longest natural arch. Nowhere else on earth has the number of arches that we have in the southwestern U.S. and the longest one is Landscape Arch in Arches National Park in Utah. It's a span of 88 feet and one of many arches you'll see in this gorgeous national park. So that's my look at some of the biggest and best natural formations in North America. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography from a nerdy perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King signing out and about to go paddle my canoe through a whirlpool. I'm sure I could fight the current. I'd like to give a special thanks to my superior patrons for their support, especially Cat J. What's up? If you're interested in supporting the channel or to purchase a pin for the viewer pin map, check out my Patreon page, link in the description. And as always, thank you very much.